Hi, I'm Dr. Peter Stapleton. I'm a clinical and health registered psychologist here in Queensland, Australia. And mostly I'm known for my research work in the area of EFT, emotional freedom techniques, uh, often called psychological acupuncture, or just simply tapping. That describes the technique because it is about stimulating acupressure points, uh, but we use a gentle tapping technique uh, with a cognitive statement and some exposure therapy uh, in amongst other things. In this research spotlight today though, what I want to share in an easy to understand manner is the research that's been conducted mostly in the area of weight loss and food cravings. It is an area that I have particularly researched for the last 10 or so years. Uh, so ultimately I want to share our Australian research here that has been done in this area. So with the growing obesity crisis in Australia itself, uh, we have been looking towards other techniques that would support our clients and indeed our patients just with their weight loss journey. So this started for me around 12 years ago now, where we ran our first EFT for food craving trial, and we just offered that to people who were adults and overweight or obese as far as a body mass index went. So if I start here, I'll just share what we've been doing and what the outcome and research has indicated in these trials. So we typically run randomized clinical trials where a computer allocates uh, participants that uh, express interest or, you know, when we do our advertising, want to be included. And a computer will randomly allocate them to a treatment condition, a wait list control, group or indeed another psychothera psychotherapy. Uh, doing that kind of thing really does make these types of trials what we call gold standard and they are the pinnacle any randomized clinical or controlled trial. It means that we're minimizing any bias that might be there. So where did we start? So we started just with an EFT tapping program that was four weeks long and it was a program that was offered to either EFT, uh, the treatment arm, the EFT participants, or there was a wait list that we compared to to see whether or not anyone who wasn't receiving the intervention uh, had anything that happened with their food cravings. Do they spontaneously kind of decrease over time if you don't do anything? I can tell you that nothing actually happens to your food cravings if you just sit around and wait. Um, so when we ran this trial, it was either an EFT intervention of four weeks or a wait list we then ethically did offer the EFT treatment to the people that were on the wait list so they did indeed get the treatment at the end we had 96 uh, adults who completed this program and it was a two hour a week tapping intervention. So they actually came to the university for two hours uh, once a week and in total received eight hours worth of tapping instruction around their food cravings. In our trials, they're always exposure therapy. So people do bring in the food that they want to do their tapping on that's causing them the greatest kind of craving response. And we actually have those present in, in the trials. We run all of our interventions in in groups not individual most of that's driven by cost effectiveness and there's some unique uh, aspects to EFT in groups uh, called borrowed borrowed benefits uh, there is a paper that has been published on this and I'll put the link in the notes for you just so that you can see how the effect of having a group really can uh, help lots of other people in that setting so this initial trial and we always measure the same kind of thing psychological symptoms such as anxiety depression or somatic kind of outcomes we always measure the severity of food cravings in people. We measure the power of food. So if food is present in front of you, uh, how much power does that have over you? Um, and how much might you kind of be drawn to want to eat it? And restraint ability. So we look at willpower and things like that. So we always do a minimum of a 12-month follow-up uh, to find out after a, something like a four-week program, what happens? Do these effects last over time? So in this initial four-week, eight-hour program, after it was finished and the wait list had indeed been through that as well and we got to look at their data too, every single thing that we measured significantly improved. So either food cravings reduced decreased significantly. Uh, things like restraint improved, increased significantly, uh, those kind of things. So every single thing. We also got weight loss, uh, but we got we saw that mostly at the six and 12 month mark. When we looked at all of our participants a year down the track and we sent them the same questionnaires and said, how are you going? Most of them had forgotten about the food craving that they'd done their tapping on because it wasn't part of their life anymore. All of the questionnaires they filled out again showed that the significant 
reductions they got in their four weeks maintained over time. So none of them reverted back to the level of depression, anxiety, food craving, restraint that they'd had in the beginning before they started the program. Funnily enough, we do ask, do you keep tapping? And most people don't. So they do the tapping while they're there in the group for the four weeks, but they don't continue it. But what it does show is that that's enough to get the change. And 12 months later, those changes are still there. And we talk at a statistical significant level, which just means it's less likely to be due to chance uh, that those outcomes have actually occurred in the first place and stayed changed. Um, And again, they forget mostly what they've done So that's where we started. Um, Our next step really was to take this and compare EFT to a gold standard treatment that is used for weight loss. And we chose cognitive behavioral therapy. So in the years that followed, we extended the EFT program to an eight week program, which was 16 hours. So again, two hours per week for eight weeks, 16 hours worth of intervention. And it was matched with an eight week or 16 hour cognitive behavioral or CBT program. Again, anyone who volunteered for the trial was randomly allocated to one of those groups. They didn't actually have the chance to choose which one they wanted to be involved in. So we had around 89 adults, again, that were overweight or obese according to body mass index, and we randomly allocated them. We also had a non-clinical or a community group who were normal weight and did not have have any food cravings, restraint, willpower issues. So they filled out our questionnaires and we could see perhaps if you like what normal actually looks like as far as that kind of thing goes. And we wanted to see whether the interventions would help the participants match those kind of scores on those same questionnaires in a normal weight, non-clinical community group. So we had that as a third group sitting there. So what happened in this particular trial? Well, over the eight weeks, of course, we got some outcomes. We got the same kind of outcomes for the EFT group, that all of those things like food craving, severity, anxiety, depression, somatic symptoms, as well as things like willpower, restraint, all of those improved. For the CBT group as well, they actually did also have improvements over that eight weeks, learning how to control their thoughts, to change their feelings, and obviously then change their behavior. They also had responses as far as food cravings went um, and power of food, those kind of things. What's interesting though um, is that EFT was able to achieve the, the outcomes that it did in the eight week program, similar to the four week one, but the CBT group still achieved the same outcomes, but it took them six months before we saw the outcomes there as significant at a statistical level. So it's interesting that that's where the differences start to occur, that yes, if you just look at it as a group and at 12 months, of course, we go back and we still check that those things are okay. It's the difference at that deeper level that EFT actually achieves the outcomes in a much shorter period of time and is absolutely comparable, um, if not superior in certain areas to cognitive behavioral therapy, at least in this area. So it's interesting that whilst the CBT group also obviously with anxiety and food cravings, achieve the same kind of outcomes, it wasn't maintained for that group. So unfortunately, by the 12-month mark, the EFT people were still significantly reduced and improved, but the CBT people had reverted back to their baseline levels of things like anxiety and food cravings. So it wasn't maintained. And again, most people don't continue the technique beyond the intervention period. So It's interesting when you start to have a look at that, that EFT works in the moment and stays changed. And another research spotlight talks about why does that happen? Why don't you actually have to keep tapping every time the chocolate biscuit is in front of you? Um, But for the CBT group, a lot of their changes that they achieved reverted back to their baseline. So that paper has been published as well. And certainly um, the links are there if you want to read that in a little bit more depth. We have taken our EFT program into the online space. We were very much aware that a lot of people in rural and remote areas can't access uh, in-person treatment trials. So we really wanted to test, can the delivery of that program be effective online and particularly because a lot of people these days are online worldwide and if it is effective for at least this one topic area maybe we can certainly reach more people that are out there. So we converted all of the training into 
32 lessons uh, where they're actually of myself. Uh, so every topic we covered in the in-person treatment programs, we made into a video. And so I'm actually tapping and teaching the technique in a video. Somebody still may go and get their food to have in front of them while we do that. And then we had an online live support group so that people in that trial could actually talk to us in between their lessons um, because obviously that uh, static video didn't give them the opportunity to stop and ask or change the words that I was saying. So we tested it in that space. Again, it was an eight-week program, so it was self-paced, but 32 video lessons, if you like. Uh, and most people progress through that over that eight weeks. Um, they certainly didn't jump ahead, and we had different controls in place to, to not allow that kind of thing. So again, every single variable that we measured significantly changed over those eight weeks and 12 months later was still significantly reduced. So food craving, anxiety, depression symptoms, somatic symptoms, restraintability, um, weight loss. Average weight loss seems to be around that five kilograms, 11 pounds over that 12 months. Um, but remember, most people don't continue tapping. So they get that change and they maintain it, um, which is great for us to see. We did take the data from the online trial and compare it to the people that had turned up in person. So we were able to kind of look at those two data sets and compare, is it are they comparable to each other at a statistical level? And the answer was yes. So that publication is actually uh, under review at the moment in 2018, so it should be available soon, where the online trial compared to the in-person trial achieved the same outcomes at a statistical level, meaning that we genuinely could say that online is actually as effective. Um, so that was great for us to kind of be able to compare Let's have a look. What else have we actually done? We've actually looked at our four-week program compared to our eight-week program. So the people that had turned up in person, originally we just started with that four weeks. But we wondered, is the brevity uh, important? So for things like compliance, um, adhering to a program, finishing a program, might that four week be enough? So eight hours worth versus eight weeks or 16 hours? And the answer is yes. So at least in this area of food cravings for people that are overweight or obese, a four week EFT program achieved the same outcomes as the eight week and at a comparable level when we ran the statistics, um, we found that they were actually as a Effective as each other. Um, there's obviously differences that might um, result in wanting to run a longer treatment program. We did find anecdotally that some of our older adults that were in their 70s uh, in age did better when it was an eight-week program. They were able just to consolidate information. Uh, but at a numbers level, the data shows the four-week program is as effective. So that might be useful if you do work with clients that certainly if you do at least cover the topics that we know are are important then four weeks eight hours will get people the outcomes that they're looking for uh, we have in one school, a local school uh, here in Australia, actually asked us to come in and with 44 of their students who are aged roughly the age of 14 years of age, they wanted them to learn how to use EFT for more healthy eating and to decrease consumption of things like sodas, um, those types of drinks and increase water, that sort of thing. So we had full school approval, we had departmental approval at a state level and we had parental approval. Uh, consent or approval that in school time over six weeks students attended an EFT group and learnt how to use these type of uh, tapping techniques for those types of areas. Uh, the biggest outcomes that we actually saw and we did a three-month follow-up on these students that was the end of their school year. Uh, this publication is available as well in the links there. That out of those the decrease in soda consumption and the, the decrease in unhealthy food choices was really significant significant and three months later had not returned to baseline, meaning they still had those outcomes. We certainly had parents letting us know that their, their children, the students involved in the trial, were going home and asking for more vegetables. Um, so that was at an anecdotal level that parents were really happy about. Um, but what we were noticing was those two things about soda consumption and certainly things like unhealthy food choices dramatically decreased and were still significant um, and reduced three months later. So that was great. 
And the, the last thing that we have done in 2017, uh, and this is currently being published, is we did run one of the world's first brain scan studies of EFT, again in the area of overweight and obese adults. Uh, these particular brain scans were done through a functional MRI machine, fMRI. Uh, so we had, it was a pilot study to test our protocols. We had 15 uh, adults who volunteered for this study and they were randomly allocated either to the EFT treatment or a control group that didn't receive any treatment whatsoever. So there were 10 that ended up in the EFT tapping arm and we had five control people who just had their brains scanned but didn't receive any intervention to again see whether or not time had an impact on that. So it was back to our four week or eight hour EFT program. So we had already established that that was effective. So just for keeping up motivation and compliance, we stuck to the four week program. So all of our people, all 15 adults came in and had their brains scanned in that fMRI machine while they were looking at images of high calorie foods. So we needed to see the parts of the brain that oxygen flowed to so that we could see a signal on that fMRI uh, imaging. So by doing that and showing them those high calorie food images, it triggered that response. And the areas that we were seeing lighting up, activating if you like, were areas to do with reward and certainly deprivation. They knew they were about to go and do an EFT program to uh, decrease their food cravings. And certainly the area where uh, smell and vision and taste come together or converge in the brain, that they were the two areas that certainly were activated looking at these images. They came out of the brain scan and then went for their four-week program over the next month and then came back in the fifth week. And the control group, meanwhile, did nothing and just came back for their brain scan. So in that fifth week when they came back, we did the same thing. We showed them the same high-calorie photos while they were inside the machine to see the parts of the brain that would activate. And remember, they've been through their EFT training program. What we noticed was a dramatic reduction and the article actually has these and if you can get a chance to come along to any conference presentation that I do, I actually show the brain scans in those. So those the areas that were activated, those two areas, were dramatically reduced. In some cases of those 10 people, there was actually no activation whatsoever. So across all 10, they had the same response, that tapping indeed resulted in a dramatic decrease in activation of those areas of the brain to do with looking at food. Uh, so what we're doing moving forward is we'll extend that trial now to a much larger sample size just to see that we get the same outcomes and we'll start to have a look at some other biological markers uh, involved with that as well. So lots of stuff happening in the Australian space, I guess, of tapping EFT and certainly for food cravings and weight issues. But we have established through the last decade, if not last dozen years, that indeed tapping does work. It will result in weight loss. All of the changes that actually occur in our trials stay significantly changed. We've just embarked on a two-year follow-up of one of our trials to see what happens two years later. Um, we know that at least... 12 months later, people don't revert back to their baseline. The changes that happen actually stay changed. And that's good news. Uh, and mostly most of them don't tap uh, beyond the trial itself. So I hope this has been useful and you might be able to share this even with uh, patients or clients that might want to explore the tapping as an addition to what they might also be be doing for this weight loss space and certainly weight maintenance over time. So I'm Dr. Peter Stapleton. I hope this has been useful. You might be able to share it in circles uh, where you move and that maybe um, looking at some of our other research spotlights might be useful as well.